Hello, my name's James and welcome to this Trade Radiators video. Today we're going to be having a really quick look at installing radiators underneath windows. As you can see, we've got a lovely window behind us here and we haven't actually got a lot of space underneath to be able to install a radiator. First things first, it's really important to be able to install radiators under windows where possible because most of the temperature reducing cold air will come into the room via a window. The reason is because often windows, it doesn't matter how great they're made, they're not usually as thermally efficient as a wall. So therefore, us plumbers target windows as a place to put radiators underneath. So any air that comes into the room or into the building will be heated up by the radiator underneath. So let's have a quick look at the installation we've got just down here. Right then, so we've got obviously our window here and this small space under here. Now the whole idea of this video is to give you an idea about the different sizes of radiators that trade radiators sell and how versatile they are so you can be able to get them under here. So we've got a height overall of just under, so just over, so we've got 473 millimetres, okay? So we've just got about 47 centimetres here, or 473 mil if that's what you want to go down to. Now we're lucky because trade radiators sell a certain radiator that's only 300 high. So we know that we're going to put our radiator in here. It's important to leave a nice large gap at the bottom so you can run any pipe work that you need to have under there and also fit your valves in as well. So what I'll do now is unpack this radiator, have a quick look at that, get it pinned on the wall and piped up. So here's our radiator. You're going to find these radiators in the convector radiator section of the Trade Radiators website. We'll leave a link in the video description below so you get a good idea about where you can find this particular radiator. But they do come in all different shapes and sizes. They're from Italy as well, so they're nice and Italian. The best in the radiator industry. And as you can see, they're really nicely packed. So with any luck in transit, and I haven't had one of these turn up yet, broken, so they should never really be damaged when they come as well. So you can be confident that you're not gonna be sending the radiator back. Let's just rub this area out quickly. Always a good idea. If you're working in someone's home, make sure you give this a good rugging out as usual. So once we've got this radiator down here, you can see exactly why this radiator is perfect for the job. Um, it's exactly the right height to go under here. It's a really good width as well. I mean, we've still got a double panel convector on here, so we're gonna have a hell of a lot of BTUs come out of this. Sturdy as well. And also these front panels here, I mean, I know that people think they're decorative, but they do actually lend a lot more kind of heat up surface area as well. So they're really good for that too. So what we need to do now, and you've seen us do this a load of times on the Trade Radiators videos, if you're a subscriber, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. All we need to do is mark up, pin up this radiator, get it piped up, and then you can see exactly what we're trying to aim for, what this radiator is gonna look like in situ, and how it's really gonna help this room heat up as well. Always make sure when you're unpacking the radiator as well that you keep to one side your brackets. Often the radiator is also supplied with screws and plugs as well, but the bungs as well need to go in too, and it's a good idea before you hang it up to whack those bungs in. But for now, I'm gonna need my brackets so I can get my measurements done. Another thing to look at as well is the fact that the radiator brackets have two sort of depths off the walls. So we've got the narrow depth here, which is what we're gonna be using today, or you've got the deeper depth here as well if you've got quite a lot of room in a thoroughfare or if it's in the middle of a room, a big living room. The good thing about having the deeper one is it does tend to sort of heat up more air at the back of the radiator and therefore give a little bit more BTU out into the room. But because we're sort of tight up against this desk here today, I'm gonna to use this smaller one here and I still know that we've got the BTUs required coming out of the convector anyway. Now most of the time when you're marking out brackets normally, you'll mark the bottom of the bracket and work up from there saying this is how much room I want at the bottom. But when you're stuck in this kind of small space that we've got here, from the bottom of the window sill here to the floor, it's best to pop your radiator bracket onto the radiator itself and then define actually from the top of the radiator where you want the top of your bracket to be. Then we know that we've got a nice little five mil gap here. It's gonna look really nice and the radiator is gonna sit snugly just underneath here like that, rather than measuring up from the bottom. So I've done that here just now. I've also measured out the two centers of my brackets as well. I've just got a mark here and a mark here. So all I need to do is just run out a horizontal from the rad, just over my marks there. So I've got one there. Plain and simple now, really, really easy to do. I've just got a mark up on here, like so. So it's a minimal amount of marking, really. Now I'm ready to drill my holes, get my screws in. Because this is such a small, narrow radiator, 
You only need to drill one hole on these, so it's easy peasy. <laughs> Right, just pop this on here. Make sure it'll be nice and level, and that's lovely. Now I've just got to prepare the rad itself. I always try and do this before we put the radiators on the wall because you don't want to keep putting loads of stress on any of the fittings that you've used to put your brackets on. So we usually run our spigots and our tails in for our TRVs and lock shields and also get our bungs in now as well. So now we've got our brackets on the wall, we've got our radiator just down here ready to go on. I'd always say it's really important that you put these little grommets on, okay? What they do is they stop the radiator from clicking when it's getting hotter and colder, because it's expanding and contracting when it's doing that. So we're just gonna pop that on here now, like so. And now we're ready to pop our radiator on these brackets. Right, so we can pop our radiator valves on here. Our flying returns for the radiator then, we can just pin on here, our copper pipes, they're gonna run back there, back to the heating system and out of the way. So what we need to do is just bring them out here, set them up and into the valves like that. So then, with any luck, once we've finished off piping up this radiator, it should look a little bit more like this. There we go, lovely and piped up. The system's full right now, and we've got this nice and hot, it's lovely and warm now running. So any of the cold air that's coming in off this window is being heated up by this lovely radiator here. I hope you can see that it's got you know plenty of room underneath, so you can get your feet under there, you can hoover under there, stuff like that. Like I say, it's only the depth of a standard ruler, you know, a 30 millimeter shatterproof ruler that you used to have at school, uh, or you may still have at school. Um, so yeah, I hope this video has helped you out. I hope it's given you a better idea about the spaces that you can utilize underneath the, the window like what we've got here. You know, you're not completely stuck. I mean, we like to get radiators under the window and it's great to know that at Trade Radiators, you've got the versatility in radiator size to do that. If you need any more help or any more information, please contact us at traderadiators.com. Thanks ever so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.